Hello there. I am back with another metal review here. Today I decided to review a release from a band that probably most of you have not heard of. Um, this band I'm talking about is Hikari Enthroned. Now, if any of you remember the 1990s, one of the things to come out of that sort of era was the popularity of uh, gothic metal. And while there's some more, uh, more popular bands that you can maybe um, use to d demonstrate this idea, such as, you know, Cradle of Filth and those, those kinds of bands. Um, Hikari and Throne was actually a, a unique example of this type of music in its own right, and one that was not maybe appreciated as much as other bands were in that, that time period. Now, Hikari and Throne is a band from England, and they've been around for quite a while, uh, and they've actually not become very popular, at least here. So it's kind of interesting to look back at their older music and uh, really appreciate it for what it is without having any sort of media hype or any sort of uh, overemphasis on it. Now, The Cutting and Throne currently has four albums released, and they're actually working on their fifth this year, which will be their first since 2004, so it's actually quite exciting for fans like myself who have been waiting for that you know, to come out for quite a while now. And before their uh, four full-length albums re were released, The Cutting and Throne actually created a demo called An Ode for a Haunted Wood, which contains a song of the same title, which has sort of been sort of one of the, uh, the fan favorites of their older material. Now, they realized that um, the music was sort of appreciated, at least to some extent, and they re-released that so that fans could actually own that music, as you can see here. This sort of demo album turned EP is called The Pond Promethean Shores, and it's quite an interesting and excellent listen that I will be describing to you throughout this review. Now one funny thing to mention, sort of a nice little tidbit here, before I get into the music, is that if you look at the spine of the album, which I'll attempt to show you here, you can actually see that it's actually listed as Upon Prometheus Shores. Uh, so it's a bit of a typo inside there, which is kind of funny, but you know, who cares? It's great music. Uh, let's get into the, the beef of this album. Now, this album is actually a six-track affair. It's a nice little listing on the back there. A bit hard to read, but um, it's quite artistic. And basically what it consists of is an introductory track and an, uh, a conclusion track, each running about two minutes long. Sort of, you know, very gothic, keyboards, interlude kind of feel to it. Um, and then the meat, the meat potatoes of the album is sort of four longer tracks, ranging from about, you know, five to seven minutes long in the middle of the album. Um, so even though people may often criticize bands for having too many interludes and, you know, calling those tracks filler. The uh, first and last track on this release are actually quite excellent, and I do enjoy listening to them as much as anything else on the release. Um, right from the get-go, you know that this is going to be a very atmospheric release, and it sets the mood for the rest, the rest of the album. Um, now, out of the four uh, tracks in the middle, the most famous is probably an ode for a haunted wood. As I mentioned earlier, it's sort of a fan favorite if you have been a fan since, you know, the 90s. Um, it actually has a music video release for it, and although it might be hard to stumble upon, I'd highly recommend you uh, watch it just as a sort of uh, throwback to the, you know, the 1990s gothic metal era, as ridiculous as some of the, the parts of it may appear in this day and age. Now, in terms of the sound of this album, it's very thick with atmosphere. Uh, it has all the standard fare, like, you know, guitars, uh, keyboards, synth, um, drumming and uh, a variety of vocals. In terms of the singing on this album, what you get is a, a wide, sort of a wide variety of things. You get high-pitched, you know, demonic shrieking, uh, more death metal growls, and actually some uh, very interesting, you know, soft-spoken parts that really build that atmosphere. So that's one of the things I really enjoyed about this release, was that, you know, the vocal parts were very enough to keep you interested, and uh, had three separate kind of modes on there. What you also notice is there's a fair bit of double tracking, and uh, it helps make the music sound darker and almost demonic at parts, which does work well for this this gothic stuff. Um, one thing I'd like to note is that many people refer to Hecate and Throne as a um, sort of a black metal band, and this album, you know, may seem like black metal to some people, but to me, it's really more of a you know a thrashy gothic uh, metal release. Um, but be that as it may. You know, people can enjoy this regardless of how it's labeled or branded. 
Now, in terms of the guitars, what you actually get is, you know, a lot of thrashing parts and also some uh, more slower in interludes and uh, sort of parts that build the steam of the album, build up tension. That's sort of when you'll hear the, the bass a lot too, especially on the, the end of uh, to, feed, to Feed Upon My Dreams. You actually get some nice little bass parts in there. Um, and it's often very common that the basses get sort of ignored on these types of releases, especially the thrashy, heavy, gothic stuff. So it's nice to hear that come in occasionally, but you know, I'd always like more of it to hear more of the bass in the album. Uh, in terms of drumming, what you get is you know a lot of blast beats and that sort of thing, but you also get some nice, more simmering parts and a few interesting fills to keep it interesting. I mean, the drumming's not like mind blowing, but it it fits the album well and it keeps it varied at least to some extent. Now, what I'd like to say about this album overall is that I really enjoyed it as a release. You know, it has its limitations, and people did compare it to you know, other bands at the time. But if you listen to all the details of it carefully, and you really take the time to enjoy it, it's something that's very rewarding, and you, you like to come back to it and listen to it over and over again. Because the songwriting on each and every track is um, well done, even though maybe there isn't quite as much variety between the different songs as you may have hoped, with the obvious exception of the, the introductory and the conclusion tracks. Um, and this is definitely a band that, you know, is sort of a hidden gem to a lot of people. Um, you know, they have four full-length albums, and even still, nobody knows who they are, and nobody wants to sell their music, which is quite a shame. So, my final thoughts about this is check it out, try to enjoy it, so, but give it a listen, give it an open mind and listen, a listen. Don't think about what type of music it is, don't think about who else it sounds like, and just enjoy it for the, the rich atmosphere that it provides. And uh, that's all I really have to say about this, this release. I really enjoy it, and I hope you will too if you check it out. Thanks a lot. Bye.